from a stall in a West Belfast shopping centre to one of the world's best known cosmetics brands. Stocked in 2000 shops around the globe, this Belfast startup now works with some of the most successful makeup artists on the planet and has witnessed an 800% increase in online sales during the pandemic. Along the way, it has built up a global social media following and its founder turned down two offers on Dragon's Den. This is the story of Brendan McDowell and Be Perfect. At 11 years of age, I went out and started working in the fish factory. I started off in the top floor making boxes, which was, was nice when I was 11. When I was 12, I was down in the, the guts fishing, in the middle of all the, the guts and the fish and the rotten fish, um, hooking them out, and it was absolutely stinking. Um, my mum used to make me, when I come home, get changed in the, the shed. I wasn't allowed in the house because it just stunk of rotten fish. Um, so that was my childhood. Um, I worked, like done loads of different jobs. The, the fish factory closed down after like three years. I think I'd done three full seasons in it. Um, and then started washing lorries, um, helping my dad out. I used to do that on a Saturday. Um, and then started working in Tesco's. Um, and I just kept, kept working the whole way. So I went to university, it wasn't for me. Um, still worked in Tesco's, was starting to be a, a manager. Knew it wasn't for me. Um, I was, th was then doing a, a degree in building. Um, I, I went from building to beauty, which is the most random thing ever. Um, but I just knew that that, that wasn't for me. Um, I always kind of had a real sales sort of background behind me. And um, when I was 21, I went off to be a holiday rep and I had the highest sales selling all the excursions. Um, from that, I then went into selling Yellow Pages, Sky TV, I had a, a real lengthy sales journey. Um, but my dad was probably my biggest inspiration to really push me to go for my own business. Um, as I said, my dad was a really, really hard worker. He worked all the hours, God would say, to keep me, myself and my sister and my mum uh, happy. Um, when he was 43, he unfortunately passed away. And just before that, he had finally got his own digger, his own tractor. He was starting to do his own business. and He was starting to do well. Um, very early days, I think it was only a couple of years that he'd been out on his own. So for me, it always stuck in my head. At 21, I seen my dad um, so young pass away. Um, I had turned 30, which some people say is late to start a business, but for me, it was the right time. Um, in my 20s, I was off the rails. Um, I lost my dad when I was 21. Um, I'd just come out as, as gay. Um, I couldn't cope with life at, at the time. Um, I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to be running a business. And there's no right, there's no wrong time to, to start your own business. Um, but for me, when I hit 30, it was like I hit the gym and I was getting that bit scared. I was getting a bit older. And I always knew, I'd always done well in my jobs and I always had the highest sales. And it was kind of like my dad, he was always like one of the best um, digger drivers. He was always one of the hardest workers, but he always said he wanted to do it for himself. So for me, I always wanted to sell something for myself. And that is how Be Perfect started out. And, and, and that's where I, I got the idea in the very early days. So when, whenever I was starting out, there was a lot of girls that I knew had overplucked their eyebrows in the 90s. Um, and they were all trying to recreate these eyebrows. And, a lot of them were a complete mess, to be honest, and that's, that's a lot of my close friends. And whenever I seen this product, um, my mum included, um, when it was being demoed at the, the event in London, it was so simple, it was so easy, and it was revolutionary at the time. It was a little bit of plastic. You held it up, you coloured it in, and it gave you the perfect eyebrow. But it was also completely waterproof and smudge-proof as well, which gave it a complete UFP. So I knew with that product that, that I was onto something, and that was our first ever product that was, was a game-changing product whenever we launched. 
from the very early days, you know, I, I, I literally started the business with £500. Um, I, and at the time, it was a lot of money. I was scared to spend it. I bought a table from B&Q. I bought, I think it was 40 eyebrow kits off the guy at the time. And he gave, he gave me a pull-up banner. And I think then we spent, it was maybe 70 quid to, to book the Kennedy Centre in West Belfast for, for the day. We sold out the week after with that money then I decided to go to the Abbey Centre, another shopping centre in Belfast. We booked it for three days um, and I bought 100 eyebrow kits and it just kept going from there. The week after I think we took Castle Court for a full week um, and at the time it was my mum's a real panicker. She was freaking out. I think the first ever trade show we booked, I think it was a, a Dublin trade show and it cost maybe I think at the time 1500 or 2000 euros my mum was pulling her hair out she was like oh you're going to lose all your money at the time um, 1500 pound was a, a lot of money and i was nervous but i always knew that um i have to take risks but the whole way through the business i have never ever taken any big risks i've taken small calculated risks the whole way through <laughs> After about three months of buying the eyebrow product off the guy, I realized I was driving loads of online sales and traffic to, to his website. And I was like, I need to do this and I need to do it on my own and I need to do it better. So again, taking them calculated risks, I decided with the, the money that we, we had made to put that back in and, and develop my own product. From the very beginning, from day one, the little pop-up was called Be Perfect. So I then decided to create the Be Perfect uh, eyebrow powder. What I did was I made it a bit, a bit different and I made it a bit better. And what I did was we added an oil into the formula that made it completely budge proof. So it was a revolu revolutionary product at the time. And I think when you're beginning a business and especially in, in such a big competitive world like the beauty world, you need something revolutionary. You need to be something that's different and something that's not out there. And that's exactly what we did with this one eyebrow kit at the time that, that was able to let us get in and, and get a chunk of that market. Um, it was nerve-wracking um, sourcing. We were speaking to factories in the UK, we spoke to factories in Europe, we spoke to factories in China, um, and a lot of people were like, oh, you can't uh, get anything from China. The quality in China was hard to beat in comparison to anywhere in the UK or Europe or the USA. Um, they just were much more advanced in production, they were much more advanced in, in getting back and everything like that. And I can remember the first batch ever coming in and I was like, oh God, it was probably one of the biggest calculated risks that I ever took. And I thought the name's going to be back to front. I thought the product's going to be completely wrong. We'll have maybe not done something proper with compliance. And I was actually sick to my stomach waiting on them coming in. And I can remember we only had at the time a tiny, tiny, tiny warehouse. Um, it was about the, half the size of this room um, on the Boucher Road. I started off in my, my spare room in the apartment, but going to the trade shows, carrying the chairs in and out, my partner was giving out, I had chipped all the walls and was making a real mess of the house. So we literally took this place where you open the shutter and you could about get 10 chairs into it and that was it. So that, that was the first place and they were arriving there and I can remember flying over in the car, feeling sick to my stomach thinking, what if these are completely wrong? We're just gonna to have to bin them. So I opened them all up and they were fine. And I think at the time we had to order 12,000 units. I think we sold them out within three to six months. So it was nerve wracking, it was exciting, it was challenging, um, but you have to do these things if you, if you wanna make it. What we did, the, the initial um, starting point to find the right product was we used the product to benchmark again. So I obviously had an eyebrow product already. I was also selling a, a different brand of tan. I was also selling a different brand of mascara. So we had a, a, a product that we liked and that we sold, but I wanted to then enhance it. So it did take a lot of time going back and forward with the factories. So what we did is we sent samples over, they sent samples back. We told them that we wanted to put something into it to make it more sweat proof and more buds proof and it's just back and forth. We left all of that to the labs of the factories and um, they were really good to work with. They, they helped us, they guided us and still to this day, the one that I found eight years ago is the main producer of all the Be Perfect products that, that you know today. <laughs> events across the UK and Ireland from wedding shows, horse shows, cow shows, 
beauty shows, you name it, we were there with the van selling literally out of the back of the van. We did that for about two to three years and it was really hard work but we had a party in every city and every village that we visited throughout the, the summer and the winter months. It was good fun um, but it was a means to an end and there was a lot of people at the time on the show circuit that that's what they did, it was their livelihoods and they were making good money. I wanted, I'm one of these people that I always want to take it further so I knew that doing the show circuit was a means to an end. Um, Throughout that journey as well, we were changing buildings all the time because after about two to three years, we started to retail. It was, I think I seen somebody in, it was Kira Daly's brushes was in a, a pharmacy in, in West Belfast and I thought, I'm gonna contact them and it was Cooper's and still to this day, they have a big uh, Be Perfect counter in it. Um, I contacted them and they decided to bring the products in and I then was up working in Balamino one day and I said to Nicole, who I was working with at the time, it was quiet in the shopping centre, I said, I'm going to go out and just knock on a few doors. I went out and I think I rang eight salons. I got to meet six and I sold the five of them there and then. And I lifted more revenue than we would in a, in a week going around the, the shopping centre. So I thought, I need to step back from this sort of live shopping centre demo trade show thing um, and put more focus into this. I was also still working full time. Um, I had my job that I was doing five days a week and then every evening and every weekend I was doing Be Perfect. So um, I was scared to leave. I was in a decent job. I was getting decent money. I worked for a, a company called Living Social and I loved it. But I knew I had to take that risk and again. It was the right time. I'd done Be Perfect for a year, but I knew my career was, wasn't really going to progress anymore. I knew if I give my full time to Be Perfect that I could make it explode. So. The second year then we started getting into, sorry, the third year getting into a lot more retail. Um, Medicare took us on, Gordon's took us on, so we were doing really well in Northern Ireland in the, in the retail space. We had to up our orders, we had to change our spaces that we were working from. The first warehouse that I took, it was um, just off the Falls Road in Belfast and it was an old car garage and it was absolutely stinking. It was just disgusting. I had to go in and I went in with a power hose I cleaned it all out. My uncle came down and he helped me put a partition wall up. We put a bit of carpet in. I painted the whole thing um, and we got a little blow heater and that was the first office. Um, and I think after about six months, we'd ran out of space. We took another office up above a, a dusty TV repair place. We got it out and there was only enough room for two tables in it. Um, then we moved across to uh, another place on the, the lower falls and we took a warehouse which was humongous for us at the time. We went in and we took the bottom floor and we thought we'd keep upstairs as an open plan office. So we did upstairs as an open plan office and downstairs as the warehouse and I think that lasted about six months. Then we took the office block across the road, then we took another warehouse. Where we are now today, um, we moved in here 10 months ago and we thought it was huge and as you'll probably see later today, we're, we're now moving, I think in here is 10,000 square foot, we're keeping here and we've now just taken on another 24,000 square foot building. <laughs> Then we went on to Dragon's Den, um, as a lot of people know, and I got an offer from Three Dragons, but I eventually turned it down. The reason being, they wanted us to focus on Ireland. Northern Ireland was working really well for us. Southern Ireland, we knew what we were going to do. We were already working with the influencers. We were trending. We were, we were kind of ahead of the game in the influencer world, which is humongous for us now. Um, and I decided not to, to go with it because I wanted more, um, I wanted to, to get outside of Ireland and to push the brand even further than, than the guys were, were recommending. If it had been three, four months before we went on to the show at the time that I applied, I probably would have taken the offer, but we had learned so much ourselves. My name is Brendan McDowell and my business name is Be Perfect Cosmetics. You are the originator, inventor and owner of the product range. Yeah. This isn't a distribution line. No. Brendan, obviously I'm impressed with the tan, the 10 second tan, it gets, the, the time frame gets shorter and shorter. What's your ambition for this brand? I don't see why we can't be the next big cosmetics company. A fantastic job and I really admire your work ethic. You know, that's really coming through very strong in the pitch. You've come in with three serious innovations, you know, it's more than be perfect. 
With two offers on the table, Brendan must now decide which one is best for him. Guys, you've done a great deal, and I am well gel. He is absolutely fantastic. So after the show, we had a massive explosion in Southern Ireland. Every pharmacy took us in overnight. Um, that said, we had already got an opening order before the show from Sam McCauley's, which is one of our biggest retailers to this day in Southern Ireland. So kind of knew after what we'd done in Northern Ireland, we would just replicate that in Southern Ireland anyway. Dragon's Den though helped us massively boost that overnight. We were opening before the show about 12 to 15 new retailers every week in the South. And then after the show, it just went crazy. So again, we had the move built in to, to take the demand. <laughs> After the show, I decided to do a collaboration with Louise from LMD, who everybody in Northern Ireland in the, the beauty world will know. Me and her sat down in a coffee shop in Magerfeld, and I says, Louise, do you want to do an eyeshadow palette together? And she said, yeah. So we sat, we scrambled up with a few colors, um, and we thought it would take us three months to develop it, and it took us nine months. So it was a bit longer than, than what we thought. Again, I'd ordered 12,000 of these products that we thought was going to last from September to December. We thought we had more than enough for the whole Christmas period. We sold out in a week. Um, and that's when we really seen the power of working with the right makeup artists and the right influencers. And to this day, it's been the, the biggest part of exploding the, the business on a global scene. The year after, we then worked on the Carnival palette. There wasn't at the time we brought out the first colour palette that had been brought out in ages and we worked with one of the UK's best colour makeup artists to develop this palette, Stacey Marie, who we brought out Carnival 1 with and we are now working on Carnival 4, so that is four years ago. Um, we've now worked with collaborations with Jacqueline Jossa, um, we've a lot, I don't want to give too much away, but we've other huge ones coming up across the world, so it's been a massive part in, in taking the business to where you see it today. For me, when we're looking for an artist to collab with or to take on as a brand ambassador. Firstly, we look at their content. Is their content good? Um, are they, you know, if it's somebody for makeup, we want to see, are they doing the current trends? You know, are they laminating their brows? Are they wearing colorful makeup? Are they doing, are they changing their styles whenever fashion changes? Um, are they getting good engagement on their posts? Uh, more importantly is also looking at do they get good engagement on their Instagram stories because if you have a, an audience that follows you on Instagram stories that can be way more powerful than, than somebody that gets a few thousand likes on their grid. So when you're working with somebody, get their stats, check that they are somebody that's going to fit your brand. Also, they're going to be creating content for you so you want to make sure that it's content that fits your grid. So always make sure that it's somebody that fits you otherwise you're going to get it wrong. With Be Perfect Live, we want to be able to get everybody there and get them to meet their favorite artists, get them to meet their favorite influencers and experience that bit of Instagram offline. <laughs> Some of the key traits for me is obviously a hard work. You know, you, you don't get handed anything wi without putting the hard work in. Um, positive attitude. You know, you have to believe that you're going to do it. If you go in with the wrong attitude, you're never ever gonna you're never gonna succeed. Um, I'm also very much of the one of these people that always remain humble. You know, always show gratitude. Always be thankful for everything that you have because it can all be taken away with you away from you very quickly. I also then would spend a lot of time networking and learning from other people. Nobody knows everything, you know, even at the size of Be Perfect Now, I have so much to learn. Um, I learn a lot from my team, I learn a lot from other business owners, I learn a lot from uh, reading business entrepreneurs um, books and autobiographies and things like that. So networking is key to learning, um, you know, finding out um, everything, even if it's a, a construction business, there's still things that you can learn from a construction business that you can adapt into a beauty business and vice versa. So for me, you can never stop learning and if you keep that sort of open-minded sort of way to be that you can never stop learning, you will always keep absorbing everything in. I also am very open, you know, I, early days in the, the trade shows, I can remember there was another beauty brand sold completely different products to, to what I did and 
they hated me. <laughs> like, there was just this new person on the scene selling eyebrows and tan and mascara. They sold completely different products. And they, the staff, you speak to staff, we were all at the same shows. And the, the owner at the time was like, tell him nothing. And I was like, oh, why? Um, and then I just sort of, almost felt sorry for this person because they, they were very guarded and shielded. Where I was like, open book, like we've been here, this is good. And then they came around to legging me a little bit because I was starting to do a lot of events outside of Ireland. And I am very much one of them people that believe what you get, you put out, you get back. And even though I'm quite open and I don't hide anything, everybody follows me on Instagram, I show everything way too early. Um, but I believe being quite open, friendly and honest with people, it will definitely be what you'll get back. If you keep yourself quite guarded and shut off, you'll never learn and you'll never develop. One of the biggest challenges that we came across was when we COVID um, for, you know, this year was, was really challenging. Uh, when we went into last March, I thought, what is going to happen here? Like, I could have said, right, let's close the doors, shut the building, put all the staff out. And I was like, no, it's not me. I'm not a quitter. I'm not going to give up. So straight away, it was like the, the positive attitude had kicked in. When we realized we could continue trading online, it was like, right, we've got to change things up here. People are at home, people are bored. We started doing live DJ sets. We started doing makeup tutorials. We started doing uh, even things. We don't sell any nail products, but we taught people at home how to get rid of their, their gel nails. We wanted to keep people entertained. We wanted to be all over Instagram. We knew people would be on their phones. We then started doing like really good offers like we would do around Black Friday because we knew that would help drive even more sales. And it really, really helped. The business has exploded this year because we reacted really, really fast to COVID. The de-stress, <laughs> what I do is I, I just have to zone myself out. I go home, spend time with my partner, I go boxing, I love boxing, it just gets it all out of my system. Um, I go for a run, um, I go to the gym. You have to take that time where you have to realise it's a business and it can't, you know, I, I say it's not 24-7, it is 24-7 for me, but sometimes I just need to get away and clear my head and I take two to three hours out. I also like going away, like whenever I'm away abroad, people in here laugh because I'm like, I, I need away, I need out of here, I need away from me. <laughs> because when I'm in here, I spend a lot of time doing things that probably when I'm out of the country, it's a quick WhatsApp or it's a quick email where it can take three or four hours here. So when I get away, it's a good time for me to, and I need it, I have to get that break because I need time to manifest and, and that's a big thing for me. If I don't get time to think, my brain just gets lost and the business doesn't develop. So getting away, exercising is the, the two key things for, for helping me. The secret, it's my holy grail. Um, I, First read it whenever I started the business, day, day zero, um, whenever I went to a trade show in London, and I've recommended it to so many people. Anybody follows me on Instagram knows I always put little quotes up from it and direct people to it all the time. Ask, believe, receive. It's from, a, from the secret. So if you want something in your life, you've got to ask for it in your mind. Um, you've got to put it out there. You've got to vision it. Then you have to believe. You believe yourself that you've done it, that you've sold that palette all around the world and it's sold out. Um, and then receive, receive is, is letting it all happen. So from the very early days, I, I put it everywhere, ask, believe, receive, um, at the end of all my Instagram uh, posts um, and a lot of my Instagram stories. So that is definitely my, my favorite quote. Podcasts, I always listen to Gary V. Gary V is one of the, the main guys for me. Um, he's always ahead of the game in terms of marketing and especially digital marketing. Um, he, I often stick Gary V on when I'm out running or, and I always have to stop, which annoys me because he'll say something and then I have to go into my notes on my phone and write down what he said so he'll remember. So he's really good in one way because he gives me loads of ideas, but he slows me down on my run because I always have to stop to, to write things down. Two years ago, I decided Be Perfect was running really good and I decided to invest in other businesses. One went really well, one didn't go so well. So I had got involved in a, a marketing agency with a, a close friend um, and sometimes working with friends in business doesn't work out. Um, it ended up eating into a lot of my time almost to the point that it was taken away from what I was doing and Be Perfect. So I had to just step back, I had to step away from it. And I'm one of these people that don't like to, to give up. Um, but sometimes you have to look at the bigger picture and think, what's eating my time, what's eating my energy? And, and when it was, it was the year in Be Perfect that 
we didn't go through the massive growth like we have every single year. So I was like, I need to step back from this. The flip of that was I invested into Voodoo's with my business partner, Denise, which Denise is a really successful Irish hairdresser. And we, myself and Denise, Denise is Pello, I have Be Perfect, and it works so, so well. Myself and Denise um, spend a few hours together every week just brainstorming ideas, and we have a really good team that we then delegate uh, everything out to. And that business has just absolutely smashed it this year as well. Um, and that's, for me, if I'm investing in anything else now, it needs to be similar to Voodoo's where um, I invest some time, but it doesn't need all my time, um, and it's obviously getting the, the, the rewards. But that's, that's just business. Some things work and some things don't. Retirement, um, I don't know if I'll ever retire. Um, I'm one of them people, I'm a real busybody. Um, hopefully in the next sort of 12 to 18 months, I'll be starting a family, so things could change drastically um, whenever that, that happens. Um, but for now, I have no intention of slowing down. I'll be one of these people that will probably, my, my vision is to probably down the line invest in multiple businesses, um, you know, maybe work part-time, part part retire would probably be, be my thing, but I'm one of them people, I need stuff to keep me going. I, I need to keep motivated. I need to keep my brain switched on. Belfast for me is a great place to start because Northern Ireland as a country is quite small. So for me in the early days, in terms of marketing and bringing a product to market, um, we very much started off as a Belfast slash Northern Irish business. Um, it's, a small, it's a small country, six counties, it's easy to make yourself known. And then we have the South, which is an extra few counties. So Ireland is an island. I think starting in Northern Ireland or Southern Ireland is a great place to start any business without having to put um, a lot of investment and a lot of money into marketing, where if you were to try and start in London, you have a much bigger challenge that you're up against. So in the early days, I sacrificed uh, my life. <laughs> um, I was working 24 seven, seven days a week. I, I still do, you know, it's very much all the time. Every weekend, there's messages coming through on Instagram, there's WhatsApps, there's emails, even everybody in here that works here knows it, it, it doesn't stop. And we're very much international as well. So, you know, you can be having chatting to suppliers in China, you can be chatting to retailers in Australia at, at all times, th right throughout the night. Um, so it can take over your life. But for me, I'm now in that position where I still work extremely hard. But what you have to do, what you have to be um, comfortable in is bringing the right people in that can take over because I, in, in one of the books that I read, which was, I think it was Deborah Meaden, and um, they talk about helicopter. And you know, if you're involved in the, the nitty gritty all day, every day, uh, you will not see anything that's going wrong. So if you're helicoptering and you're looking down and you're able to see everything that's working and also what's not working, it's, it's the only way to develop your business.